All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Rooted the Podcast. My name is Kevin Hu. Today we have Pastor Kevin Butcher on uh, this podcast, this episode as well, and Pastor William Mack. Say hello, everybody. What's up, y'all? Hey, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to be a little bit more energetic, I promise, on this episode because one of the uh, things we wanted to do is actually recap a very full 2022 with Rooted Ministries. I mean, there's going to be so much content flowing through our minds and hearts that there's no way we're going to be able to capture this under a six-hour podcast episode. So we're going to Mm -hmm. do our best to give you a taste of how God's been working through this ministry and just, you know, even more like casually just kind of share what are some of those moments this year um, that just really stuck out that you just feel really just encouraged by or you feel like it really needs to be uh, shared with with the folks out there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start this and punt it over to you, Kevin Butcher, um, share a little bit what's what's been on your heart and mind as you reflect back on 2022 and, and the way God's been using Rooted. Well, it's it continues to be so much more than what I ever thought it was going to be. I think I've shared with our listening audience, and I, you guys know this, that when we first started a few years back, I, I just wanted to help a few pastors and get a small paycheck so I could pay my bills you know, before I went to glory. That sounds kind of morbid, but that that's what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. <laughs> and instead, what's sure, happened is sure. this has turned into a thing, man. And and the reason is because the need is so unbelievable. I mean, by now, everybody has heard the statistic that somewhere around 40% of pastors are considering letting go of their of their ministry. And, and for, for the younger demographic, for the younger pastor, I've heard that it's closer to 50%. And so what we're what we're seeing is an increasing amount of pastors who are either already out of ministry but carrying significant wounds that they're they're living with. They're living with trauma actually and they're getting in t- contact with us. We're we're getting referrals from therapists and counselors now uh to to you know they they continue to do their work with the therapist but they they come alongside us or we come alongside them because we have the ministry experience, we've been where they are. And so we, we become a part of their healing team. And then also many, many of the pastors that we're getting in contact with, as well as pastor spouses, an increasing number of pastor spouses, uh, they may not have articulated it yet, but they're coming to us because they're so fried. So they may not have made this statement, if I had a way out, I'd get out. But, but that's, that's the emotion that is kind of controlling their narrative. And, and many of them are, are saying, where is my God in the middle of this? Um, where, I think I've, I've used this little anecdote from a, a dear pastor friend of mine who just about, you know, one, last year at some point, I asked him at one point on, on, a, on a Zoom, he was really, really under it in his church uh, up in the upper Midwest. And I said, where is Jesus for you, my brother? And he, he proceeded to tell me what he thought Jesus was saying to him. And I said, I, I don't mean to be coy, but I'm not asking you what Jesus is saying to you. I'm asking you, where is he for you? And he paused, brothers, and he looked down at his desk, and he said, honestly, Kevin, I don't know. And so what, what we're finding is, not on purpose, pastors are ministering in a far country, if you will, of ministry. You know, the far country in Luke 15 isn't just you know, party, partying, it, it can be us ministering apart from uh, the loving arms of our Father through His Son Christ in the power of the Spirit. So mm. we're getting an opportunity to invite yeah. pastor after pastor, spouse after spouse, even some of the kids uh, of pastors, uh, back into the arms of their loving Abba and kind of reframing their ministry going forward to minister from His arms, not waving at Him from a distance, but literally being braced by that abiding love. And, it, and it's making a world of difference. And I, I really want to just say to our audience, we never thought, we knew there was a need. We didn't know the need was this great. It's, it's really uh, unbelievable. So William, what, what do you want to add, man? Yeah. You know, I think that the greatest gift and opportunity that we've had over the last maybe year and a half that I've been with Rooted has been an opportunity to create space for pastors to breathe, you know, that um, the reality is is that all of us have dealt with the compounded traumas of 
the pandemic and, you know, church attendance and the political landscape and all all of this stuff. Um, And we've been able to come alongside pastors and give them a safe space to kind of like exhale and um, just um, to, to, to breathe. Yeah. Um, in the midst of all of that stuff, because I think oftentimes we forget that our pastors are human beings as well. Yep. And so while they're shepherding us and supporting us and praying for us as we're going through all this stuff, they're going through it as well. Their mm-hmm. finances are being impacted. Their families are being pulled apart. Um, and so being able to um, have our retreats, to have our one days, our three days, our virtual encounters where pastors can just sit in safety not fear of um, the judgment of the people that are sitting in the pews, not afraid of what may come down the pike uh, from their denominational heads and be able to say, you know what, this has been really hard. I'm struggling. I don't know if I necessarily agree. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about what I feel about. Um, I pass the people that I disagree with and I'm trying to figure out how do I maneuver through and with all of that. Um, It has taken a toll on my family. It has taken a toll on my relationship with my children. Um, To be that space with them has been such a gift because, um, you know, y'all know as well as I do that not very many pastors feel like they have safe places to land and to breathe and to share openly. And so um, I count that as a great gift to be able to say that we are creating those spaces together through the love of Christ to say, hey, we're your brothers, we're your sisters, we're here with you in this. Um, And um, we don't know how long the valley is gonna be, but we know that Jesus is with us in the valley. And if we can be there with you as well, then we're here. So that's been probably the greatest joy that I've had um, over the last um, year, just being able to create those spaces to breathe for our brothers and sisters. Yeah. We've been able also to um, to realize that we now have so many pastors that we're seeing individually. Um, William, I know you you have been uh, you're on a regular basis basis seeing twenty plus pastors right now and or spouses, Christian leaders, whatever. And I'm seeing somewhere around thirty, and you and I both have hovering around us uh, ten or twenty more that occasionally will call in. And so it's got to the point where it can't just be about um, William and I providing spiritual direction or pastoral counseling or whatever. Um, and so we we have, uh, William, under your leadership, man, you've done such a good job. We've identified some pastors around the country who are already, they've already come to a point on their journey where they're realizing they must abide in the love of Jesus Christ for the long haul. They are They are on that journey not living into it perfectly because there's no way to do that we're not they're not but around the country having these care pastors that we can refer pastors to uh so that they get the care they need even if right now william and i are are book solid that has been a huge step in making this uh broadening our ability to create space for the abiding love of jesus with these brothers and sisters um and, and we're, we're in, the, in 2023, we're moving more deeply and pervasively in that direction. We must. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, so that, that actually is a perfect connection to what I was going to say, because I don't know uh, for folks out there who, who listen or watch this podcast, if, if they are kind of aware of the scope of this, like the fact that, Kevin, you started us off by talking about this is not only in our cities and our local areas, in our in our circles, but it's across the country, it's across the globe. We have people emailing and messaging in from, you know, across across the world who are saying, I've been listening or I've yes. read your book, you know, whatever it is, and this is what we need, and this is, you know, desperately what we yearn for. And so there's a ton of people out there. But one of the things as I look back at twenty twenty two here for me is that you know, I, I come from a space where it's all about let's how do we make this more efficient? Mm. How do we make this production value better, you know, in, in churches? How do we wow people? How do we keep people yeah. in the seats? And so it's all about scaling this so that we can, you know, just reach more people and and all of a sudden people become statistics. They become just another, you know, head in, in, you know, on a Sunday morning. It's not an individual, their story, their context, their spouses, their families, their journey, their trauma. Yeah. And y'all, like, as you say, you know, both of you are, are interacting with 20 to 40 pastors 
or more on a given month, like I want all of y'all out there to hear this, like that is a hundred percent, like that isn't, it's a hundred percent of who like Pastor Maggie, Pastor Kevin are like who they are. Like y'all are sitting with people, meeting with people, like kind of finding yourself and placing yourself in a space where you're insert, inserting yourself into their journey. You're walking with them. And I don't know if like most of y'all out there, I think are, are pastors and, and church leaders. So, you know, like that is heavy work mm. because it's a very relational thing. It's not, let me just give you some information. I'm not at your professor or teacher and just dropping some nuggets of wisdom. I'm here because I love you. I am you. I'm with you. Um, and so when I when I hear about how much you guys are <laughs> holding on to, how many folks you're walking with, it's um, very humbling to me, actually. It, it's also very convicting. It's, it's powerful. It's powerful that I see that the two of you are doing this stuff. Um, but I'm going to be honest. I also go, I don't know if that's sustainable. Yeah. Because the need is great, but the workers are so few mm-hmm. in this area. And... That's why. So when you when you segued into care pastors, Mac, like as you're you know kind of organizing this and 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 creating, I guess more pathways for people to have deep connections with other pastors across the country. Like that's really cool. Um, and so for those of you out there, if you're looking for ways to pray for us and to kind of you know think about how to keep rooted on your hearts, that's a huge part of 2023 for us. Yes. Is how do we um, actually build our team out? even more so, you know, and not just for the sake of scaling something, no, um, but really discerning through like, like God, who do you want to bring into this team so that we can continue to pour into these ministers and their families across the country? And hopefully like, I don't know what God will do right across Amen. the globe. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah, I mean, you guys know, cause I send yeah. you uh, these requests that are coming in to the rooted website from, I mean, we get a couple of week, um, you know, maybe four or five a month, let's put it that way, about four or five a month from often, not always, but often third world countries where the resources for pastors are like minimal or non-existent. And we right now just don't have the bandwidth, uh, the finances, the resources. We don't have the staff person to handle um, um, those requests because, and I mean, you've read the emails, guys. I mean, you can you can tell when they're when some of these pastors are writing the, the tears are running down their face they've got they have the lord jesus in a way that i think probably i don't have him because i have resources they don't but they they want somebody to come alongside they are literally begging us to come overseas and just provide to do a conference which we wouldn't have even have to do prep we would stand there and just share uh, the love of God uh, through what God has already poured into us, and they would be just lapping it up because there's so much need. So you're right, Kev. I mean, th- there's so much to do. We're trying to to not just scale this out. We're trying to keep that individual pastor in mind um, because otherwise then we could, we become just another ministry that's trying to I guess in a, even an unconscious way, wow people with our statistics. Forget that. I mean, this is about real human beings, individual sons and daughters of God who are dying on the vine and are, are literally wondering, is God really my father? Is his son Christ really my brother? Did he really mean it when he said, I will be with you always, even into the, to the end of the age? And if so, why am I not feeling that? Why why am I why am I shrinking inside? Why is my heart um, broken? And I can't see him. I'm thinking of the U2 song, stuck in a moment, I can't get out of it. Um, that's where many pastors are living. And we're just trying to create presence for them. There is healing in that presence. We're not claiming to be the most brilliant spiritual directors or pastoral counselors on the planet. Um, But man, when two or three gather, man, and we're able to say, I'm saturated in the love of Jesus, this is what I have to offer, create space for them to tell Kevin, as you've illustrated, their real story, not holding back because they're not afraid, because they know we're not trying to get something from them. I'm telling you, Jesus the Christ meets us in those moments, and he does what he said he came to do. I've come to heal the brokenhearted, and set the captives free. We're seeing it. 
we have story after story after story of pastors crossing over into what I would call a healing journey from a space of being just overwhelmed by the valley of the shadows. And it is, what, what that's doing is, that's creating space for them to give that love away to their churches. And then those churches, in turn, are able to give that healing love away to the world that is definitely, if you haven't noticed, that's what they're looking for. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a whole lot. But we, as you said, Kev, we, I have never been more passionate about being present to my brother and sister pastors and their families, never. And I'm an old man, and I've never been more passionate about if God can use me. William, I know you feel the same. Kev, you feel the same. Pastor Pam Pangborn, who is uh, per diem with us, and a couple of other of our care pastors, I think we're all passionate about being present to our brother and sister pastors. We know that when we provide that presence, Christ, Christ brings us home. He brings us home. Amen. And and one of the things that, and I'm hoping I'm jumping ahead, Kevin, who one of the things that we we are praying through and being very intentional about is that we do not want to, like we've already stated over plenty of times, we're not just trying to say, hey, check out this statistic. We are in com- contact with this many pastors. We are looking for a consistent quality of care and support yeah. for each one of our, our leaders. And so um, as we're developing out our care pastor team, as we're developing out our online modules for these pastoral cohorts that we're hoping to put together around the country, you know, we are moving forward with the idea that our pastors, our care pastors team will be able to provide uh, quality uh, community consistency and care. Those are the three things that we're working towards, mm-hmm. that 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 in these pastoral cohorts, they will find community with other brother, sister leaders, um, that they will find a consistency that, hey, I know that this is somebody that I can count on on a regular basis, um, and that they will get the care that they will need um, um, from a loving uh, a cohort leader, care pastor, director, um, not to say that they have to lead and love like uh, Pastor Kevin and I do, but what we are expecting is that they are leading from the love of Jesus yes. to our brothers and sisters, and that they are encouraging um, our brothers and sisters who are leading to abide in that place. And yes. so, um, when we talk about the number of people that are making requests on a regular basis, like I am blown away at how many people who said, I'm just Googling. You know, yeah. the love of Jesus in leadership and rooted <laughs> pops up. It blows my mind. Yeah. And, um, you know, or if we go out and we have a speaking engagement and people come back in, they're not compelled necessarily by our our, our, our talks, our speeches. Right. But people are compelled by that love and they recognize that That's there is it. a void that has been missing. And as you just heard from Pastor Kevin, he speaks so passionately about it. You go, man. That's the thing that's missing. I would love for somebody to walk with me in that space. We are not talking about church growth and measurements. I'm probably the last person you want to talk about because that's another soapbox and Mm -hmm. another podcast (laughs) for another day. I care about the one that God loves and has called and wants to make sure that they are in a safe, healthy place in him Mm -hmm. so they can continue to be all that God has created and called them to be. I know Pastor Kevin shares that and everybody on our team shares that same heart, that same desire. So, beloved, when you hear us talking about the number of people that are coming in, we don't just take people in um, and take pastors on our, our list and say, oh, we've got another one. We've got another one. We've got another one. Like we are praying. We are discerning. You know, is this a Pastor Kevin connection? Is this a Pastor Matt connection? Um, you know, is this a Pastor Pam connection? How can we come alongside these individuals? What referrals can we uh, pass yeah. along to these individuals right. so that they are healthy, they are safe, and they are deeply abiding in the place where we know God wants us all to be, and that's in the love of his son, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So as we consider and as we ask you all to uh, be praying for and with us and how you can support the ministry, please keep that in mind that we are not just trying to pick up more pastors to say that, hey, Rudit's knocked it out the park with 300 more pastors. That overwhelms me just saying. Yeah. <laughs> we are trying to provide quality, consistent, and community care yeah. to our brothers and sisters as they lead through the love of Jesus Christ. Indeed. I appreciate you know that, that that was needed. That was needed because I, I hopefully that 
uh, people out there listening weren't thinking like we, we are here just talking numbers and and wanting you all yeah, to, nah, to see that nah, hopefully nah, it's nah. not that because and, and and this is another side of it right like the two of you don't just meet with pastors individually but as a team sometimes individually as a team you're invited to do um meetings with retreats. entire staff teams mm-hmm. you're doing retreats you're mm-hmm. speaking at these engagements and part of me goes my goodness the, part of me wonders if the lord is actually helping to to kind of keep everyone at bay for lack of better kind of language because if everyone started coming in and said like right now I need this. I need yeah. someone to walk with me and I need all of your time. It's like we just don't have the resources like you said earlier Kev to be with people the way we want to be with them. And, and that, again, it's that's not why just we're also, the numbers, it's not just an individual. Yeah, exactly. That's why we're yeah. also moving okay, toward okay, a okay. retreat format, you know, whether local or national. Um we're trying to create space for pastors to come together. And I, I'm thinking about the retreat we did in May on a local level in, in central Indiana, and then the retreat we just did in October. And I, I don't you guys have visions of, as we were standing back and watching these pastors worship, as we were watching these pastors, you know, in, in, in our retreat in October where, you know, we, we asked them to come forward for a father blessing, and then we were able to uh, place on their on their shoulders a... A, a Middle Eastern shawl, if you will, that uh, or scarf that that was symbolic of the robe that the father put on the prodigal son when he came home, and everybody was going, "You need to discipline him. You need to banish him." And he goes, "No, no, 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 no. This young man is not even just going to be my servant. He's he is and always has been, even when he was in the far country, my son." And to watch these pastors, this is what got me. Um, some of them got in all three lines to get three different father blessings. And when they came to me, I'd often yeah. hear, I've never had a father blessing, earthly father, God the father, yeah. anything that even reminds yeah. me of that. And yet, they're tr- listen, uh, to our audience, they're trying to give away that blessing to their communities of faith. How can we give away what we haven't received? So to create space for hey, those 40 I pastors. Parenthetical? Go ahead. You know, I, I was going to say we had it was three men up there to give a father's blessing. Yeah. Pastor Pam Pangborn was standing there up there with us to support us, you know, with yes. the prayer shawls and the oil. And 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 people formed a line in front of her. And we're well, like, I, didn't even see I that. need I need a mother's blessing. I need, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Yes, it was it was it was this beautiful. I mean, yes. I mean, she ministered. There was was a presence yeah. that ministered to what I believe the women that were in the room. But there were also some brothers that walked up to Pam and was like, "No, I need you to pray over yeah, me as well." Yeah, boy. Right. And in so, fact, if I would have known that, I would have dropped readers. my line and gone over to her to get that blessing from her for me. <laughs> <laughs> so to to create that space. So anyway, to, I didn't mean to cut you yeah, off, but I just no, the, the, yeah. so yeah. good to watch. Yeah. I, I I wish. In fact, I would invite our audience to go to, you know, um, rootedministries.co and see the pictures. You will feel what it looks like when we gather hungry, isolated, many times marginalized, trying to be strong, but feeling very alone, pastors in a room, and to watch even how Christ meets them in their relationships with one another. I mean, we could hardly get those folks to stop sharing what the three days had meant to them at the end. And re- remember, uh, one of the pastors wrote us quickly um, after she got home, and she said, can you tell me immediately when the next retreat's going to be? Because I have yeah. 12 pastor friends that I want to invite and let them get that on their, cate- on the, on their calendar right now. Are you kidding me? That, that shows the need. Um, and and I, you know, it might it might be worth our while. I don't know what what our time is here, Kev. But William, if you even have a story you'd like to tell, if you think it's uh, appropriate, uh, and I may have a story to tell that you know keeps people's confidentiality, but um, that just to, to illustrate some of the healing, I'll, I'll tell one, and then and maybe I you'll mean, think of one. Walking. Go ahead, go ahead. You no, go you ahead. go ahead, please. You go please. ahead, son. Here, here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> this is like Chip and Dale, man. No, that I was little cartoon, say, I, I like, no, after you. It is. It is. <laughs> Who's going to say? No, I really think that there's, um, very quickly, they, there was a brother that um, that I've been walking with probably for the last six months who, again, was one of those people that just showed up uh, via Google. And he yeah. was Googling 
something different, um, understanding the love of Christ, which led him to the book. And then after he read Pastor Kevin's book, he, you know, the last few pages talked about Rooted Ministries, which I want to say at the end of Choose and Choose Again, like Rooted had just launched or maybe, I mean, it, it was it, Rooted was real fresh at the yeah, end of Choose and Choose Again, if I remember the timeline correctly. Anyway, he goes from there, gets on Google again, Googles Kevin Butcher, Rooted Ministries, up pops uh, the ministry website, and um, and we have been connected ever since. And um, he was looking for Kevin. He got connected to me. Um, and I will say that, that parenthetically, that there there is some prayer and discernment that goes into how Who can gets, we serve each yes. brother and sister. Mm-hmm. So that's correct. Um, yeah. And so, you know, sometimes we, we tag team. Sometimes he's like, you know, Mac, you know, I think this is something that he may need. Or maybe the individual may identify, hey, I think I need some spiritual direction or, you know, whatever the case may yeah. be. But anyway, um, he and I started walking together um, as we started forming the plans for the retreat. Um, he was like, I definitely know I need to be there because I can't find community where I'm currently located that speaks this language. Wow. Mm. And I feel isolated. Long story short, the brother comes to the retreat. We have an amazing time. And when he comes back, he tells me, he's like, I've never experienced love um, like that from strangers. Yeah. I've never been accepted um, by individuals who don't look at me as some type of anomaly when mm-hmm. I share my full story transparently. Yep. And the time around the table that I had with you guys was the first time I'd taken communion, wait for this, in five years. My Lord. He said, I had not taken communion in five years because so much guilt and shame mm. about who I was and the things that I was going through, and I felt like I should somehow or another should um, should be better as a leader. And because I wasn't a better person, I had exempt myself from communing with my congregation. Mm. And it was not until I got to the retreat that I understood that I am so deeply loved that every time the invitation is extended for me to come to the table, the Father is talking to us, but he's looking specifically at me. And it was the first time at the retreat in five years that I had taken communion and it was well with my soul. And I was so glad he had done it. Um, and to hear that, like like I said, we had been journeying together almost six months before the retreat. I did not know that. But to know that the love of Christ met him at this place where we had uh, created space and set tables and done all the experiential and all the curriculum stuff behind the scenes. But he just needed a place where he could be loved, accepted yes. and known that when the father calls us to the table to commune, that he is also talking to me. Yeah. Um, that is probably one of the greatest highlights of this year that has that is stuck in my soul, because we do not know the weight that people are carrying on a regular basis Boom. and still mm-hmm. they put on the mask, they show up and they perform and they give and they serve, not because they're hypocrites, but because that's what they are called to do. And there's still there's deficiencies in these valleys and these gaping holes in their souls. Right. And we get to come alongside them and go, hey, I love you. You're doing great work. But let's talk about this hole right here because Jesus has come to fill in that sunken place. Yes. And so for me, that has been probably one of the greatest joys that when I have moments, even within myself, where am I doing enough? Can I, can I, can I, can I do more to hear a testimony like that to say, Hey, because of what you all have poured out, I'm able to come to the table with confidence and know that the father wants me there and I have Mm -hmm. a right to commune with my other brothers and sisters. That's all worth it. I mean, that's the kingdom of God right there. I'm thinking of a young sister pastor who got crushed in her first charge. And so we're we're walking together into some healing. It just she thought I you know I've been wanting to be in ministry for years. And then I finally got my seminary degree and I went into my first church, had one good year and then got crushed. And she's doing some healing work right now around the love of Jesus. Is is he still there? in that dark valley was he there with me or did he did he abandon me in that moment and then i'm thinking of a brother pastor that was just referred to us um, who has been out of ministry about four years and has just been living i'm just going to say with trauma 
the trauma of what, when he described it, I, 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 I've heard it all before. I've experienced some of it in my own ministry, but I got all choked up thinking, how is this brother still even believing in Christ and walking around? So we've started to do mm-hmm. some healing work together. Um, just the first time, it was just listening and just letting him know that he's not alone and that of course he's feeling this way. There's nothing wrong with his faith. He's been traumatized, pummeled by the powers of darkness in a church by other staff that were in authority over him and and others in the community. But he's getting some healing because he has a place to go now. He has a larger community to be with. And I'm thinking of this brother pastor. When he first came to me, he said to uh, to me, um, he was referred to me by a denomination, and he said, um, I've been in ministry about 20 years. I need, you know, I kind of need some retooling, recalibration. We hear that a lot, that at about the 20-year mark, you know, I just need a little juice for the rest of, of my pastoral journey home. And I don't know, a few months in, of course, you guys know me, I'm a broken record. I just kept talking about the love of Jesus. And do you know the love of Jesus? And have you experienced the love of Jesus? And is that love your safe place? Are you rooted and grounded in love of Christ? It wasn't with any judgment. It was just invitational. And he, he even told us later, he told, told us at the retreat, actually, he said, I was so tired of hearing Pastor Kevin just talk about the love of Christ. But one day I said to him, I told him, I said, son, I love you. And I'm proud of you. And he paused. And he looked at this, he looked at his desk and then he looked up and he said, outside of my wife, no one has ever talked to me like that in my entire life. And I'm convinced, I think he's convinced too, something began to shift that day so that Mm -hmm. what he realizes now is that he wasn't looking for more juice or better strategies for his last 20 years or 30 years of ministry. His heart was created to long for the love of Christ. You know, as Dr. Kurt Thompson says, we all come out of the womb looking for someone, looking for us with love and delight. He had been looking for that love Mm -hmm. and that love had been surrounding him. And finally he said, yes. And it has changed his, it's changed so much in his journey. So that between William and myself and and Kevin, you have other stories. um, That's just a, a, a small taste of what is happening every day on Zooms, at our retreats, uh, with our care pastors who are meeting with folks. And and it, it, it actually is why we are unashamedly um, asking you to consider us when you think about prayer support, um, that you would have us on your radar. And, and when you think about not just year-end giving, but um, maybe consistent giving, you know, I, w- I'm not very good at asking people for money. I'm, I'm feeling like, hey, uh, we're sharing what the vision is. We're sharing what's happening. You're grown. Give if you want. But I think I'm a little bit more in the mode now since we've had to kind of expand because of all this need um, beyond our resources. We're, we're bleeding cash just a bit right now. Um, we really, really want you to feel this with us. We're inviting you to feel these stories feel the churches that are going to be transformed by these shepherds getting in touch with the shepherd in the middle of the valley of the shadows and then think of the non-believing world that right now what does the non-believing world think of church not much and when they do think of us they don't think of the jesus that we know and love and worship what if they could begin to see and feel that love before we know anything about their theology and they don't even care to know anything about ours. What if they are drawn by the love that they are created to long for by through these communities that are pastored by these shepherds that are going to, beginning to abide in that love themselves? That's our mission. We really encourage you to think about us, pray for us, and maybe even pray about giving um, to, to, this, to this mission. I think as we kind of wind this down, I, I want to continue building on that because even historically for, for me personally, before joining staff, Rooted has always been kind of like the easiest pathway for me to just say, I, I'm giving, I'm giving to Rooted. Um, 
primarily because it's so clear to me where it's going. All right, like sometimes I can give it to an organization and they have a bunch of different programs and processes and administration and all this other stuff. But when I look at Rooted, it's like I know that what I'm giving goes directly into the in an investment into the opportunity that one of you or someone in the staff is sitting with a family, sitting with a church leader, sitting with the with the pastor, giving them that space. Like Kevin, that that example that you just shared, and, and Mac, having that journey with someone seeing them eye to eye, knowing their story, feeling their story. You're not just saying, I love you because that's the Christian thing to do. You're not saying, here are your five steps to more wholeness. You are with them so that they know that you are genuinely, authentically, fully with them. And again, that's back to what I was saying earlier. You can't scale that kind of stuff. That is deep relational investment with people. And so I would just jump on that, Kev, and just say, listen, for, for those of you who are in a position to give generously, especially at your end, if those of you who are in a position to say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm in a good spot financially or whatever it is, and I, I just feel like I can give on an ongoing basis, a recurring gift, the gift that you give rooted, the, the donations that you give into rooted, it directly goes to some of these pastors who, honestly, they don't have the ability they don't have mm-hmm. the resources to just go on the next retreat and, you know, to go to a spa, to go on this or go on that, like even coming back to abide. Like so many of those pastors, y'all, it was because of the generosity of folks coming alongside Rooted Ministries that enabled them to be there. That's correct. We covered their lodging. We covered their flights. We covered their food. There was no uh, retreat dues to pay to have Pastor Pam and Kevin and Mac and everyone up there. They, they were just simply invited in to receive. And that's just a, one example of how your gifts um, are used here at Rooted Ministry. So um, I don't know, Kev, Mac, is there anything else you want to add to that before we kind of close this episode off? No. So I just want to say thank you to those who have already been supporting Rooted, whether it's been yes. through prayer or financially giving. Um, know that your prayers have been heard. And I believe the response has been yes and amen. Yes. Um, and I am extremely grateful um, to all of you that have been praying for and supporting us. Um, we see your comments on the website. We see your comments on the podcast. We are grateful for your text messages. And I just want to tell you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because um, like Kevin, who just said, your gift is not just um, a one-time hit. Your gift is making a kingdom impact and a ripple effect um, across the kingdom. And um, it really is benefiting not only the pastor, but it's benefiting that pastor's family, it's benefiting that pastor's marriage, it's benefiting that pastor's congregation. And as they are abiding in the love of Jesus Christ, they can then lead in a way that they can encourage others. So it does make a difference. It does have an impact. And so as you are praying about where to give at the end of the year, I would pray that you would consider not only a one-time gift, but also a monthly gift to the ministry so that we can continue to create this sustainability so that we can continue to um, travel as needed, plan the retreats as needed, scholarship as needed, um, um, build out our team as needed so that we can continue to care for the ones that God cares for and loves the most. And I just want to say thank you again for what you've done in the past and thank you for what um, you're praying about to do in the future. And Indeed. Everybody has choices about where they give their their extra cash, if we're blessed enough to have some latitude with our finances. Some, some people aren't. Um, God knows that. God provides for every need. Some of us have some latitude with, with some extra some extra cash. And I, I just want to say, I don't know why I feel compelled to say this, but um, I think some people think, well, what could my $50 a month do? My experience with nonprofits, and William, I, I suspect you, you would back this up, but maybe not. But, but if you don't agree with me, don't say it. Just act like what I'm saying is the real deal. But my experience <laughs> with nonprofits um, has been that, yeah, they, most nonprofits have one or two or three or five or ten pretty hefty givers because that, they have those resources. But it's the $50 a month, $100 a month givers that provide the substance of the support Absolutely. of nonprofits. I personally give to several different nonprofits at a at hundred dollar a month. Not to let you in on all my, my finances, but I because I know it matters. And I you know, ten of those folks yeah. 
And we've got $1,000 a month for that nonprofit to use if we trust them the way they see fit. So I, I, if God's tugging at your heart, um, I want you to know no gift is too small, whether one time or or uh, monthly. And and Kev, why don't, why don't you close us by just telling people how they can give? In other words, where they can go to give. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, the easiest way is actually if you go to rootedministries.co, on the top of the toolbar, you'll see a little donate button. And actually right there, you can say, hey, um, again, if this is an end of year thing for me, this is what I have right now. There's a one-time donation button. And if it's on your heart to do a recurring amount, you can click on that as well, put in the amount, and it'll set you right up there through PayPal. And of course, you can always change that later as, as well if you want to go up or down. So that would probably be the easiest pathway. There's a contact pathway if you want to see our mailing address and you just want to mail in a physical check. You don't like this electronic stuff. Yeah. You can also do that as well. Um, and of course, any other questions, you can definitely reach out to us as well. So uh, brothers, thank you for, for jumping on this episode. Thank to you, To all of you out there William. listening, watching. Thanks. Oh, man. yeah. Uh, but yeah, just, just thank everyone. Just for the support the encouragement, uh, those of you who've just been reaching out and just saying thank you also of like, we see, we see what Rooted is doing and we love what God is doing there. And it's, it's all, it's all good. It's Amen. all good. Amen. So until next time, y'all blessings. Peace.